Hey all, Choi Boy here. Welcome to another video. Today we got the Shazzy's portfolio update for October 2021. Let's get straight into it, but before that, just a disclaimer. Not a financial advisor, please take everything I say with a grain of salt because I'm an amateur just like you. Don't know everything. You can use my video as reference points, but please cross check it and don't buy and sell solely because I talked about it. That's all good, let's get straight into it. We got the portfolio value of $19,813. This value is just a bit higher than the previous portfolio update. I think in the previous portfolio update, it was around $19,300-ish. Now it's $800. The big changes were around BlackBerry and a bit of Raycon, but um, plates are driving it down a bit as well. So there's a lot of interesting things going on this time. The portfolio update is going to be pretty uh, brief and short this time because there's not too much to cover today because there's not that much events. All the fun things happened in the last two months, then it's kind of chillaxing now. So we got the total return of negative 795 and that's pretty close to break-even point which is good we all know that BlackBerry and Plexia drove my portfolio value quite a lot um, on the downside but it's getting better so if we go in here I think I haven't talked about this in the previous portfolio update but here it is for people who are um, wanting to see this so I guess for a lot of you um, if you've been joining into my channel recently then um, you won't know where all these realized gains come from but if you look at my previous portfolio updates last year um, they're in the channel so check them out but um, you'll know that I used to be more NZ stock focused and I made a lot of good um, NZ picks like Augusta, Abano and uh, Plexia was pretty good back then as well I had Kathmandu, Heartland Bank they all made profits for me last year and I realized most of it when I sold them and bought Blackberry it wasn't the best timing for BlackBerry, but it's okay. But for the unrealized gains, you know it's a bit on the negative side. Uh, more than my realized gains on the negative side as well because um, of BlackBerry mainly. And Plex should have been driven down quite a lot since the past year. So that's where this is coming from. The other ones are pretty not so important but transaction fees around $318 you can see I've been swinging here and there dividends I don't have any because I don't do dividend stock investments so that's my returns simple return is just this return um, divided by that and that's what you get 2.92 on the negative percentage um, the chart is pretty average I mean we're just sitting it's pretty consistent like there hasn't been too much volatility um just a bit of ups and downs um but not significant like roughly like a thousand plus minus every month for the past several months so it hasn't been too interesting it's just reloaded shares is just does that it just reloads out of nowhere it's kind of annoying but it's all good wallet only a five bucks referral money probably so Let's go down and let's talk about each of these stocks. So as I mentioned, not too much going on, but let's start with the US stocks. First one, it's BlackBerry. BlackBerry, we can see that there has not been like big events, but um, we can see that they're having really good kind of contracts and partnerships with companies and they're expanding the business in cybersecurity, which is their main priority for them. And they got the other side like IV and QNX for like embedded um, real-time OS. You know, they have, you know, separate units in the business, but you can see that they're working hard on the cybersecurity because they want to be a cybersecurity company, right? This is where people get slightly confused. It's, it's just that BlackBerry has changed their business like roughly seven, eight years ago. And people don't realize this yet, but you can see that if you look at all their product lines and their services, it's all about cybersecurity, QNX or IV. You like it's those kind of things. It's not smartphones anymore. So you can see that they're definitely working hard on the cybersecurity, which is their primary one. And there hasn't been too much going on with QNX or IV just yet, but I think we'll see more of that next year. So I'm looking forward to that. It's definitely a dark horse for um, BlackBerry to kind of bloom in that QNX and IV space. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. But, you know, just before the end of the month in October, they had this kind of news. I saw this um, elsewhere on the news and I looked on their site and it's the same thing. So it's legit. So they were, you know, ranked 50 out of 100 
top 100 companies that um, are recognized for employee happiness and satisfaction at work. So that's really good because a lot of these IT companies and big tech companies, they're starting to focus more around mental health and work-life balance. And that's really important because if you have happy employees, they will do better work for you and um, they will create uh, better productivity. So it's it's a win-win process, really. You just got to take care of your people. And it's really good to see BlackBerry just come out here as rank 50 out of the top 100 companies that are recognized for this. So really kudos to them. Um, you know, like it makes us as investors pretty happy about this because like why why wouldn't you be happy about it, right? So just going back, so BlackBerry, it hasn't been doing too much in terms of price. Um, $10.80. So it's been moving up and down between the $10 and $11, $12 ranges. So it's not doing too much, but it is finding some kind of support around $10, which is really nice because it shows that investors are seeing value in BlackBerry and it's not dipping as much as it would be if it was underwhelming. You know, I think BlackBerry is something people are still sleeping on because they are deemed a meme stock thanks to Wall Street bets. But I think for people who got to know about BlackBerry through even through Wall Street bets, they know the company exists and what they do now and they started looking into it and they're like, actually this looks like a gem. So that's my kind of opinions around BlackBerry. I'm looking forward to it hitting back fifteen dollars and making this fifteen dollar you know, not all time high, but like a, you know, the all time high in the past one year, right? So, um, yeah, I want to see this become the new support, right? $15. That would be really nice. And pushing it to 2030, I think John Chen, the CEO of BlackBerry, would be pretty keen to do that as well. So we'll look forward to BlackBerry um, in the future. But yeah, not too much. I'm expecting good things to happen in BlackBerry in terms of the stock price as well in the next one year. The one year from now is gonna be the interesting thing for BlackBerry for me. I said it was gonna be a short one, probably not. <laughs> Let's keep going. So the second one we have is Virgin Galactic, the second US stock we have. Virgin Galactic hasn't been doing too much. There hasn't been any significant news about them for quite some time now. Um, they've been having some stuff going on with the FAA. I think that's resolved, but they have a new competitor and that's why people are not so keen on that. And the problem is that that competitor is not public. So they're not IPO just yet, but it's quite interesting. For people who are interested in space travel, you might know about Blue Origin. Blue Origin is Jeff Bezos' baby and his own project around space travel. And they've been knocking on the doors and, you know, um, yeah, Virgin Galactic is not too happy about it. Well, I don't think they would be. And the investors of Virgin Galactic, such as myself, not too much in Virgin Galactic. I only have like 185 USD or so, but you know, it still um, hurts that there's a new competitor and it has to be Jeff Bezos. But we know if we just look on like social media and just media in general, we can see that they're talking about the Orbital Reef, um, which is uh, Blue Origin's little commercial space station. And I think they're looking to, you know, human space travel and opening access to new markets. So they're kind of entering the same markets as um, Virgin Galactic. And yeah, this is probably the biggest um, threat to Virgin Galactic at this point in time. I'm not really too like personally keen about space travel. Like I, I'm pro about space travel, but I'm not someone who would actually do it myself, to be honest, but not that I have the money to anyways, but it seems like people are digging into these kind of space travels nowadays. It's going to be interesting to see how this affects Virgin Galactic and if they can uh, work something out with them or against them, um, who knows really. But um, yeah, it's going to be a quite a hectic competition there. But until that, there's not going to be much going on with Virgin Galactic. And as I said, I don't have too much money in it. And that's one of the reasons why I don't really pay too much attention to it. It's pretty much a dead uh, company for me. I made decent profits from it already. You know, someday I might just get rid of Virgin Galactic. Because it's not really my interest anymore compared to like earlier this year. I think all the fun in Virgin Galactic died out recently. So yeah, that, that's what I feel about Virgin Galactic. Next, 
stock is the first New Zealand stock. I mean, I wasn't going to talk about A2 Milk on my portfolio updates because I didn't buy this because I wanted to, but I thought it might be good to just cover it because there has been quite some drama with it. There has been continuous lawsuits against A2 Milk and people are not happy about them, them lying about stuff and there's so much thing going on. They're sitting at $6.57. Um, you know, I bought it when it was just around 6 bucks, just under, but um, yeah, we saw it go up to $7.20, then it came back down. And what's the hype? During the uptrend of this part, let's just look into here, we can see that there was a bit of a hype because they were like, okay, we are able to enter the Chinese market again, the baby formula market is booming again and stuff like that in China. So I guess that's where people were like, okay, this is the return of A2 milk. But were they wrong? Possibly, possibly not, we don't know just yet, but there seems to be ongoing stuff with lawsuits. But not only that, that They've been talking about there's no material changes to its position, but you know, the problem is that the annual profit fell 79% to 80, 80 mil. You know, A2 Milk was always, you know, famous for having pretty good profit margins for how much revenue they make and stuff like that. But yeah, if the profit margin is falling that much, then um, it does become a bit of a problem. And we can still see that they were too heavily invested in the Daigo channel, which was pretty much not even the infrastructure, but just something natural. But it seems like they need to work on something properly, or maybe just get bought out by some kind of big company like Nestle or something like that, and make the investors um, happy by at least giving them some premium price or something like that. But I'm not sure about how I feel about A2 Milk, but it wouldn't be my cup of tea and that's why I wouldn't buy more of it. I will get rid of it sometime in the next month or so uh, when I do a live stream. I'll be flipping the money I have in A2 Milk somewhere else and I'll do a poll and a live stream. So make sure you guys look into that. I'll put a title to clearly state that I'm going to be flipping A2 to something else of your choices. So uh, have a look into that live stream in the future maybe in another week or two or three. Let's see where it goes. Next company, let's talk about Raycon first because there hasn't been much going on. But Raycon is quite interesting because they made me around 60% at the moment, which is really good. Remember, I bought this in June and it's been really good for four months. Four months and I'm up 62%. That's phenomenal. So it was really good timing for me to buy Raycon in June uh, when it was just under a dollar. In the previous update, I think that was just under 50%, like 47% or so. But you know, it's growing. It's definitely growing. And people are recognizing the fact that Raycon's product is going to be so relevant in the next couple of years. And it currently is as well with the shortage. And you know, there's so much potential with this company. I think it potentially can go to two, three dollars and maintain that as long as they capture a lot of that market share globally, you know. So it's their time to shine at this point in time. They need to work hard right now so they can capitalize on it. And that's the really important part with Raycon. It's going to be interesting to write it out. I'm just sad I didn't buy more of it because if I had $10,000 instead of $1,000, I'd be up $17,000, right? But I didn't want to spend too much money on stocks um, for the next one or two years because I'm starting to look into properties and, you know, you don't want to have too many investments, especially risky investments or small cap investments, so on. Uh, when you're trying to buy a property. So I started to kind of build my cash position and that's why I didn't put too much on Raycon. But you know, 62% is still pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the numbers here. Just sucks that I didn't have more. The last company I'll be talking about is Plexure, the last New Zealand stock I have. It's quite an interesting one because Plexure had been moving up and down a bit. There has been some uptrend earlier two months ago, then it's come down again. There's a lot of things going on. Um, I guess the main thing was the task merge and how that worked out. Um, it's quite interesting because there were people who sold stocks, then there's people who 
got a lot of stocks now. I'll talk about that briefly as well. It's just that I don't know where investors stands right now because the capital raise was for 52 cents. Now it's dipped down to 56. It was around 67, you know, 65, just around that range when the capital raise was, you know, going on because this dot right here is when I bought into the capital raise. It's getting close to the capital raise price, but not quite. I'm not sure if it's going to find bottom here or not. If it does dip below 50 cents, I might be willing to buy a bit more Plex share, but I do have good vision of Plex share. It is a risky move they made and you know, merging two companies is never easy and having pretty much a brand new executive team, as I mentioned in the po uh, previous portfolio update, like normally something like this would turn me off to kind of hold on to the stocks but something's telling me not to sell it just yet and it's it's like a gut feeling because you never know like you just don't know what's going to happen to these kind of deals and the mergers and stuff but something tells me it's going to be good and that's one of the reasons why I hold it is not because I worked here before and I'm emotionally attached. It's none of that because, you know, as I think people ask me, why do you still hold Plex share when it's going under? Like, we don't know if it's going under. It's just having some hard times. It's going through a lot of complex deals and mergers. You know, it's just never so easy. And because I believe in the company fundamentally, um, especially with Task, Task, Task is a pretty good company to be merged with Plexure, in my opinion. I think they complement each other really well. So, you know, for that reason, um, I'm willing to, you know, just stick it out. But we can see that if we go into the top shareholders of Plexure, this is simply Wall Street, we can see the top two people are the task people. We can see that Scobby Ward was one of the early investors of Plexure. He held he was number one shareholder for quite some time, but he's dipped a bit because I don't think he um, went into the capital raise. McDonald's didn't really go into the capital raise, but they didn't sell either. Phil Norman is the chairman of Plexure and he was the ex chairman, the founding chairman of Zero, right? So he has increased his shares in Plexia and normally that's a pretty good sign when you have the chairman buy a whole bunch of stocks it's good but then again it might be beneficiary I didn't look into it too deeply just yet but it might be stocks from the deal not too sure but if he bought this then that's pretty good but it seems like most people are not acting on it and they're just holding it out so it means people are very neutral about the deal just yet and they don't want to act too early on it just yet so they don't want to buy or sell which is similar to what I was but I, because I don't have too much money in Plexure compared to these guys um, I plan to just join the capital race because I think 52 cents was pretty worth it in my opinion but they did dilute the Plexure shares by pretty much 100% so that means that there's double amount of shares outstanding for Plexure now compared to before it was like around 170k no it was around like 170 million shares outstanding now it's like 300 and something so yeah it did grow quite a bit but you know we did the math before and um, if you stuck it out then you must know that it was going to be like 100 percent share dilution because it was pretty much um that that's the amount of um shares they were creating for the merge and stuff so that's going to be pretty interesting to see craig and andrew is the previous um ceo and cfo respectively um these two guys has um, sold a bit of stocks but not much you know and because they're ex-executives I'm kind of keeping my eyes on them because they're st they're still in the game which is interesting because you know we can see that they ha didn't leave because of bad blood or anything and I think people were quite confused on where they stand it's just that they might have you know not like the deal that with task and stuff or maybe there was no benefit for them to stay so they might have left but they still believe in the business so maybe that's why they still hold a bit because you know if they don't believe in the business there is no need to hold it or maybe there's some contracts who knows really but you know it would be concerning if these guys just sell out because you know I mean even if Craig and Andrew are not in the business anymore um, if 
if they think it's going to make them money, then they'll probably keep it, right? So, I mean, that's a simple way of thinking about it. But that's going to be pretty interesting to see how it goes. So that's pretty much Plexure. We just need to look and see how the task and Plexure merge goes. But until then, we don't know what's going to happen. But it's going to be pretty interesting, right? So I'm going to just write it out and see how that goes. And let's hope BlackBerry and Plexure kind of pumps a lot in the next one year. That's what I'm looking forward to and that's what I'm trying to build towards. So let's see how that goes before I sell my stocks to buy a property in the next one or two years. Cool, if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Give me a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're watching this without subscribing because that's illegal. Not really illegal, but please. Bell notification and Stay tuned for my next live stream updates. I will put them on my Instagram stories, but also I'll pre-schedule them so you'll be able to see my channels. Normally they're on a Sunday, so keep an eye out for that. And I'll see you in the next live stream. Cheerio.